Are things out of alignment for you? What happens and what can you do? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, here's the question. How are we dark horses? You know, the ones everyone is betting against, the ones they don't expect to win, place, or even show on the track, and they'll even laugh on us when we talk about trying. How do we show the world our greatness and triumph? Well, that's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. My name is... Tracy Brinkman. And push it up. What is up? What is up? What is up, my dark horse friends and family? Welcome back to your weekly dose of getting aligned learning. I'm your dark horse host, Tracy Brinkman. And you, well, that, my friend, is infinitely more important. You are a driven entrepreneur, or perhaps you're one in the making. Either way, you're here because you're ready to start, restart, kickstart, and just start leveling up with some great marketing, personal, or business tips and results in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. Man, got another big episode for you today, right? Today, Nate Bailey shares things about being out of alignment, how one area can impact all the others, what can happen when you operate at a higher level, relationships and the struggles, and so much more. Plus, I'm going to let you in on next week's interview episode guest, who's a girl known as the girl with the golden shovel. I I messed that all up. You know what? Doesn't matter. I'm leaving it in. And as per usual, the dark horse corrals are chock full of personal business and marketing G-O-L-D spilling from every corner of the dark horse entrepreneur HQ. So let's get to the starting gates and go. All right, my dark horse friends and family, today's guest is Nate Bailey. Now, Nate is a natural leader and a speaker who knows how to impact and reach an audience. And I'm sure he's going to reach us today. He's a best selling author with three books as well as an entrepreneur. He has built multiple successful businesses in the area of insurance and real estate. He recently fulfilled his lifelong dream of selling his insurance agency to follow his dream of becoming a full-time coach. Nate was also a lieutenant serving our country in the United States Army as a platoon leader during Operation Iraqi Freedom. During that time, Nate was charged with the safety and leadership of 42 fellow soldiers as they served overseas in Kuwait. Nate has a simple philosophy when it comes to life. Live what you teach. That's it. Live what you teach. Nate sees what he needs to get done and he does it actually he sees what needs to get done and he does that he pushes his team to the max and he makes sure that he's always leading from the front by pushing himself one step further actually probably a hundred miles further but we're going to let nate tell us about that all right nate so welcome to the dark horse entrepreneur man how you doing Doing good. Thanks, Tracy, for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. I'm glad to have you here, especially after reading some of your your bio. And uh, I'm, I'm a, first off, I'm a big fan of the military. So thank you for your service. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm a, a third generation military man myself. My grandfather, my dad, I went in after yeah. high school for six years. So I feel you 100%. My dad did uh, 23 years So I got to experience both sides of the fence, you know, growing up in the military. And then when he uh, he retired, I was in my uh, early teens. And then, like I said, right out of high school, I joined for for six years. And so I I got to enjoy the uh, the inside looking out. So it's really cool. But I want to I want to hush my mouth. So you can oh. tell your story, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly that brought you to where you are today and why you love doing what you do so much. All right. Yeah, you bet. Um, I always, you know, try and figure out where I where I should start this. But, uh, you know, today I am a coach. I work with um, primarily business owners, entrepreneurs, work with some professionals and, and uh, executives. Um a lot on leadership and business, but you know, anytime you're a coach, conversations really encompass all areas of life, right? Because if one area of, of, uh, is not in alignment, then uh, then it affects everything. So, um, you know, when I grew up, I always go back, I guess, to just being a little kid. I don't know if you remember, you know, your, your those early days. Um, 
and we used to get called out of class to go to the auditorium because uh, there would be a, a special guest speaker that you didn't usually know about, right? They'd drop it on you, and it was always exciting to get out of class and, right. and go do something else. And so, but I would I re- really remember the stories of a lot of the people that came through, and and I also just remember thinking how cool it was that people did this for a living. Like they, I would be like, man, they, this is what they do they go you know across the country and visit schools and and talk to kids and motivate them and inspire them and and uh leave this lasting impact on them and i always thought you know that'd be cool to do that but you it's like how the heck do you ever figure that out right and so you just kind of filed that away and i was always active in sports played played throughout high school and into college played some college football and and uh you know through that um always was gravitated towards leadership positions myself, ended up joining the army, became an officer, um, was deployed to Kuwait for a year, was a 15 month deployment with some training beforehand. And, um, you know, I'm going on this year will be 20 years in September that I'll be married. So three kids, um, and it hasn't always been smooth. It's been, you know, just like, many of us in life bumps and bumps and bruises along the way and pitfalls and and um but like i said you know i've been an entrepreneur i've had an insurance business i was a teacher for a while coached in high school and so again always just kind of gravitating towards leadership positions and then ultimately um, coming back from deployment i wasn't exactly sure how to fit back in or at least i didn't come back home and 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 you know I didn't uh, ease back into my marriage like it probably needed, right? Just naive to a lot of things, not knowing, you know, at the age of 30, thought I knew everything and didn't know anything. And uh, and so made some mistakes along the way. And just, you know, again, you're, you're gone for so long on this deployment and you think almost every day of like, when you're going to get home. Time really drug on on deployment when you know, my wife's home, I think time went by quite a bit quicker, right? Because she's still busy just taking care of everything and, and working and, and the time goes a little faster. But um, come home and then you have kids and that just magnifies some of the issues that, that we were having inside of our marriage and, and uh, you know, lost track of my health and my fitness and, and I'm trying to uh, build some businesses and just from the outside looking in, maybe it looked like I had my stuff together, but really on the inside, <laughs> I did I did it. So. <laughs> Um, that's how, what brought me to the world of coaching was, you know, I, I didn't know it existed, but stumbled upon it and, and started investing in myself. And, and then my eyes opened to like, oh, you know, I went to work on myself, went to work on creating the life that, that I really wanted and, and, and learning how to um, be a good husband and a father and, and at the same time, be successful in business and take control of my health again. And and all of that, you know, after doing that work on myself, realized that, hey, this is this is kind of right down my alley. I've, I've always wanted to be a leader and to impact others. And this might be something that I could do. So over the last six years, I've been on that journey to figure that out. Sold my insurance business um, three years ago now, a little over three years ago. And I've uh, been full time, you know, doing what I do as a speaker, a coach, um, a leader. And so, yeah. That's, that kind of brings me to today and where I'm at. Ah, nice. So you've had uh, you've had quite a past, right? I, I heard I heard uh, a teacher. Uh, I heard you um, owned an insurance company. Obviously, we heard the uh, the the deployment uh, to Kuwait. And wh- what else did I miss? I know there was something else in there too. <laughs> but you you've 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 traveled a, a few paths. Now yeah, one of the one definitely. of the thing one of the things I heard is uh, you know. As a kid, and I, I remember those days. I don't think we're too far off in the age group, yeah. but uh, I remember uh, seeing those those speakers that would come to the class. You'd be like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Yeah. I had the opportunity when I worked for Coca Cola down in Atlanta, and we did uh, career days for the local high schools, and I got to be one of those speakers representing okay. the Coca-Cola yeah. company and, you know, share, Hey, here's the things I did. And it was a little different for me because I was the long haired guy in a suit, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I still had the suit, but the long hair, they're like, how do you pull that off? But uh, it was really cool to, to be on the other side of that. And it was kind of a, it was one of the things that kind of started a speaking career for me, but um, 
I want to dig for a quick moment in there. You, you, you mentioned that coming back from deployment and, you know, the ease, the unease, I guess, would be the real word uh, inside the marriage. Right. Uh, and I don't want to talk about the marriage necessarily if you don't want to. But I think it really does bring the lesson home of the impact of situations and relationships inside and outside your business. Right. Yeah. You want to dig around in there for a little bit? Tell me about uh, how it, relationships or the, the good, the bad, the ugly of those relationships can impact you and your business? Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, f- first off, it's like coming home from deployment, just um, I, it's probably it's not the same for every relationship. Right. But I think, you know, just being gone for so long and there's a, a little bit of a disconnect there and, and my wife wanting to spend some time to mm. allow us to reconnect, even go, to go to a wedding retreat, like that was put sponsored by like some kind of a veterans service or someone that supported veterans coming home. And I don't know, I guess at the time thinking like, man, that to me, w- like is a sign that like something's wrong, right? Or yeah. that marriage mm. retreat is a bad thing. And actually since then we've gone to three or four and we enjoy it. It's, it's great time together, disconnected from the, you know, taking intentional time to work on our ch- each other and away from the kids. Um, but to, at that moment, I was like seeing it as a weakness and not thinking we need to. And just, uh, and then you also wanted to make up for the lost time. And so, um, you know, just, you know, selfish, really selfish. So, sure. um, and so, yeah, when, when things are out of alignment um, inside of, your, your relationships, if it's inside of your health and your fitness and how you feel about yourself there, like wherever it is, that is absolutely going to impact you inside of your business. Some people can cover it up for a time, but it always catches up with us. Right. And I don't think that you could ever truly argue 100% that you can cover it up fully. Right. It's impacting you definitely um, in your performance as a leader, whether you're a business owner or entrepreneur, or even if you're just a, a professional, professional career, um, you know, inside a business, like if, if things aren't going well at home, you carry that with you. Uh, and pro- and not as much as we really truly do realize, because if you've ever seen one that someone that's, you know, been off in a certain area, whether it's, you know, maybe it's physically where they've just been like not happy about themselves, not happy about their, their habits, whether it's working out or the food that they eat. And then they make that shift. Something happens They make the shift. They start to shed some weight. They start to feel uh, better about themselves. <laughs> and just like without right. them even knowing it, they, they start to glow and it just impacts everything that they do in other areas and people notice it. Right. So I guess that's what we're talking about is, you know, coming home and, and not investing the time and the energy that I, um, that I, that I should have. And again, I didn't know any different. It wasn't like, I just, and I just didn't understand. I was just young and didn't, sure. and, but you know, doesn't excuse it, but, uh, but that's just the way it was. And luckily I, I, you know, had some people come to my life that were able to help me see some things I couldn't see myself. Yeah. That's, that's definitely huge. My, uh, my dad had to go through that a couple of times. He was in, uh, Korea as well as Vietnam. So those returns uh-huh. were, were challenging to, to yeah. say the least. Imagine. And, uh, now if we take that, one step further and talk about the the people you surround you with in and out of your business. I mean, there's an there's a level of, I think uh, there's a level of importance to paying attention to who you surround yourself with. Would you would you agree? Yes, absolutely. And you know, I mean, it, it gets tossed around so much now, but it's still really really true, right? I don't know if it's Jim Rohn or somebody says right that the show me the five people you hang around with and, you know, I'll show you, you know, basically the results that you have in your life or the life right. that you live. Right. Um, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. And also I'll take it a little bit further. When I really, I, like I said, it was about six years ago that I, that I really got in this journey of personal development, personal growth, really wanting to improve and, and get on a different path and journey in life. Um, I started I started to invest in myself. I, I, I started to surround myself with others that want, were kind of headed in the same direction. And, and as they started to ray, rise in their life, I, that kind of forces me to do the same thing to keep up. And then, um, you know, I got into ultra 
endurance running and extreme endurance which put me in different circles like circles with uh former navy seals and and mm. and they're elite in in their life and that carries over into who they are as, as people as well and so now i'm in those kinds of circles and and then you just continue through this and i look at the people that i'm surrounded by and in the in the community and the connections that i have and the network that i have today because i decided to take a stand for myself and invest in myself um, it just put me into different circles of people that operate at a high level of life now that doesn't mean that i don't still have um friends from you know before that journey began and sure. it doesn't make me better than anyone else i'm just right. saying <laughs> you know I, my, my network has definitely grown uh and now you know because of those circles that i'm in it kind of forces me to continue to live life at a certain level or standard um because those people that are in my life uh operate at that level and they're not going to tolerate someone being in their circle that isn't right mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I I know the kind of people you're talking about, boy. It, 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 and there, I think there's a there's an energy that comes with being around people like that, right? And it's not like you have to be like this, otherwise I'm yeah. not going to hang around with you. It's just right. they 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 exhibit that energy, and you just you just take it in. You're like, man, I I want more of that. And, and in order to yeah. get more of that, you've got to operate at a similar level, or at least be trying to attain that level. Um, I know most of the folks that I engage with at a, that are operating at that level, if you don't even have to be at their level, if you're trying, they're like, yeah, come on, let me, let me yeah. help you out. Right. Right. Yeah, now absolutely. you've mentioned, you, you've mentioned a couple of times investing in yourself and I know what that means for me, but what kind of, kind of lay that out, how, what it means for you and how that kind of evolved. Yeah. Um, well, I guess investing definitely from a financial standpoint, right. Um, you know, to, to, when you don't, like I said earlier, when I didn't know exactly what to do to get the life that I kind of thought I wanted or mm -hmm. the life that I see others living, um, you have to go out and find others that, that are living that life. And you can find that through seminars, events, um, you know, coaching programs. And uh, that's kind of what I did. I, I, I found You're now listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast, a, a coach, a coaching program, a mentor that that was living a life that that I wanted to, to live. And and, you know, it comes with an investment, not just financially, but of course, there's a lot of time involved, a lot of travel, right. a lot of different events to attend. A lot of different, um, you know, trainings and and calls and and all with the purpose to help me to get where I wanted to go personally inside of all the areas of my life and and uh, and then once I see the power in doing that and making that investment in myself and the return that that has given me, uh, really that has opened the doors to some of the people that I um, have. You know, like I wouldn't be on this podcast right now if it wasn't for for that and some of the circles that we're in. I know. I think you know. I think you've tied to Zach Babcock somehow and he's become a friend and he's helped me with some certain areas. And so I've just continued to invest in myself uh, because I know, um, you know, in the beginning it was tough. It was hard. It was a big decision. Um, it was scary because the investment was, was not small. Right. And uh, you're not sure and you want to make sure you get the results. And, and, uh, and then, but once you have the courage to do that and take that leap, then you start to realize that like really it's you're betting on yourself and who would you who else would you rather bet on and so i know that if i continue to make those investments moving forward i know what the possibilities are i know the, the opportunities and the people that i'm going to meet and the caliber that they're they play at and i also know that uh i'm going to get a return on that investment no matter what so i always know that it's worth it and i'd much rather you know, bet on myself than, than somebody else, right? It's just like uh, investing <laughs> in a stock. You don't invest in the company that you never heard of or the product that you don't use. You know, you, you're better off investing in the things that you use on a daily basis and the companies that have a track record and have been around for a long time that aren't as high of a risk, right? Amen. hundred percent there. And I think one of the key things that I, uh, I learned um, and you've, you've probably learned this too, so feel free to chime in, is that as you get out there and start investigating 
uh, the opportunities, right? The, the, the coaching programs, the mentorships, the individual or the group opportunities. And I think one of the keys is it's not just to find someone that's living the life that you like, but aligns with where you want to go. Right. Yeah. Because if, if they're, if they're living that life, but they're a jerk. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you want to be a jerk, hey, cool. More power to you. Um, yeah. I'm not that kind, but you know, it's, it definitely rings true to find those folks that resonate with you when you're going to go, especially if you're going to be investing some, you know, the narrow in the process, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, myself now as a coach, I, I, I want to surround myself with the, the people and the clients that, that fit me just as much as I want them to feel the same way about me. Otherwise, you know, if, if either one of those are off, then it's, it's a miserable experience for both or one right. or the other or it ends up being a miserable experience for both. Right? right. And so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the great thing is, is that there are plenty of great quality people out there in all different areas of knowledge and expertise and industries uh, to help you to get where you want to go faster than you would on your own. And, uh, and that will be that right fit for you. Yeah. Absolutely. hundred percent. So it, would you say it's been my opinion because I started doing coaching probably in the mid nineties, you know, when coaching uh-huh. wasn't cool. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, do yeah. you, do you think it's really become more mainstream to, to folks to, uh, to have a coach or a mentor in, in their world? You know, a big part of me wants to say yes, but another <laughs> part of me like thinks that maybe not as much as I think. And I just say that because, you know, with social media, I, I joke around. I don't know if you know who Mike Young is, but he's a he's a friend of mine. And yeah, and we've been talking a bit about this lately. It's like there's a lot of, like myself, coaches and uh, mentors and consultants and Internet marketers and we all end up in the same circle on social media. So we all see each other and That's we true. all see what you're doing and we all see the programs that they have in the offer. And all of a sudden we're like off, we're making our offers to the people that, that are doing the same thing <laughs> as us. And so we feel like everybody's doing it. Right. And uh, the reality is, is I don't think everybody's doing it. I don't think uh, even a large percentage of people have even thought about investing in, in themselves. Mm. Um so I do, I think it's more than it was in the nineties or even in the two thousands. Yes, absolutely. Sure. But I still think uh, that it's not as mainstream as we might believe. That's a great point. Trends. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it from that angle that if you're all, if you're all swimming in the same lake, of course, yeah. it seems like everyone's doing it. No, that makes <laughs> yeah, sense. Absolutely. So when you get into doing your coaching or whatever arena you're stepping into, there's fear. There's some doubt. I haven't done this before. How mm-hmm. do you crack that shell? That's a tough one um, for sure. Um, and I don't know. I guess uh, I, I definitely remember when I first decided to put myself out there. And uh, it was tough. And it was even more tough because it was in the circle of people that didn't know me as a coach, right? They knew me as the insurance guy or whatever else, right? And so now all of a sudden it's like, what's this guy doing? What what are you doing? What's going on? Um, But at the same time, I still did it anyways and pushed through. And, uh, you know, imposter syndrome is a big, big uh, catchphrase nowadays. And I guess that's kind of what it was dealing with. Uh, You know, who am I to think I can do this? Uh, Why do I... why would anybody want to work with me or invest in me to help them get what they need in their life? But um, it really just happens by putting yourself out there in spite of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, starting from where you're at's a big one. Like mm-hmm. I started from where I was at with the people that I knew and, uh, and kind of went from there, continued to invest in myself, continued to grow, continued to create relationships continue to put myself out there, you know, even wrote a few books and the same thing, who am I to write a book? What, am, you know, what are people going to think? Right. Not, and then it would be a podcast and, you know, all the, it's just like being okay, sucking <laughs> in the beginning and figuring that out as you go and knowing that if you can stick to it, you're going to get better. So really, I guess that's like true for anything in life, but, but especially for something like uh, coaching. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a it's something that a lot of people aren't able to get over, right? Because there's a lot of people that want to help people and impact people and would like to to be a coach, but uh, 
I think what we're just talking about stops a lot of people from ever doing it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of folks out there that their fear trumps their passion, right? Oh, I want to do it, right? And they get that, oh, okay, I buy the course or, or whatever it is they do. And they don't take that. They hit that first wall. Some of them don't even take the first step, right? Uh, they got the right. course sitting out there in their digital yeah. space and yeah. that, that's it. But I think there are those that actually start taking those first few steps, but they hit that first wall, whatever it is. You yeah. know, they stumble, they bumble, they trip, they fall, or maybe even they go so far as putting the offer out there. Hey, guys, here it is. I'm going to do this course. Yeah. It's $47. And crickets. And they're like, right. okay, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, I, mean, I tried. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so if 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 you're sitting there in front of someone, they say, dude, Nate, man, you gotta help me, brother. I, I put I put it I put my I put my shit out there and I got crickets. What yeah. do you tell them? Well, I mean, again, I think it's uh, you know, what do you expect? Like no one's known you to be that person or this is the first time you've ever done something like that. Um, it's just like any, any, any business or any time that you go out and you start something new, it's, uh, you got to build it over time. And, you know, I was just talking about this. Uh, I was writing an email about this thing today of, you know, in today's day and age where everything's at our fingertips, we go to Amazon, we can buy something it's, and it can be at our doorstep as fast as a day from right. now. Um, you know, we, we post to social media right after something's happened and we get, instantaneous feedback, likes, comments, shares. We, we turn on the news and we can literally see what just happened, you know, across the world on the other side of the planet um, seconds after it's happened. And so uh, our attention spans have, uh, have gone down because, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, it's great that we have the opportunity to, to be able to, and the capability for some of those things, but also on the flip side of that is it's, uh, you know, people are, want, they, they decide they want to be a coach and they want the success now. And they're yeah. not, you know, you know, there's a, a give and take there with, with, with the technology and the, and the, and the thing, the ability to have what we want. Uh, when Amen. We want. Amen. I think, I think we can remind folks by reminding them to liken it to, uh, I don't know, learning how to play a sport or learning how to play a, a musical yeah, instrument, right? Absolutely. Yeah, some folks can pick it up and they can play by ear. My great grandma was like that. They can pick up a guitar and just start sounding like whoever you you pick right. your favorite guitarist. Uh, but other folks, they got to grind at it, man. They, yeah. you know, they picked it up at 13 years old and took them five years to figure it out. So remember, everyone, you know, it doesn't happen overnight or all those overnight uh, miracles that you've heard of. Yeah, they were they were grinding away in the background for years trying to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you got uh, you got the ear of all the entrepreneurs, all our dark horse entrepreneurs out there. And you've you know, you've you, you've had the successful businesses. What? tip do you want to make sure they hear from Nate Bailey today? Um, it's a good question. You know, I think it's a lot of what we've, we've been talking about. Um, a, a big piece, like I, I mentioned briefly, you know, getting into ultra endurance races and running and, and uh, you know, ran a hundred miles. I just ran another hundred miles here a week or so ago in Alaska. And, uh, <laughs> and but uh, you know, again, it's uh, number one, running a hundred miles you have to have some patience and, and be in it for the long game, but you also have to be able to stay present and stay, you know, be a person of your word, especially to yourself. And so, you know, I have something that I, I, I call the integrity bank where you just, you, you say you're going to do something and you do it. And every day you do little, you make promises to yourself and you, and you, and you become a person of your word and you make deposits into your in integrity bank every time you follow through, because there's going to be a day when you're going to have to make withdrawal, right? Um, you know, something's going to happen. Something just comes up, life happens and, and it doesn't always go as planned. And, and, uh, you're going to have to break a commitment or an agreement and whether it's to someone else or yourself. And so do you have a balance in your account to be able to make that withdrawal? Too many of us have been going through life, making withdrawals, breaking mm -hmm. promises to ourselves every single day. And there's no money there and they're, they're insufficient funds and, and they, and you can see it in their life. And so, 
You know, you, we can start today, no matter where we've been up until this point, we can make a decision to become a person of our word. And so that we can get to the point where when we tell somebody we're going to do it, normally if, 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 uh, if you tell somebody you're going to do something and they just know you as the exact opposite, they might shake their, their head and say, yeah, sure. That's awesome. All, you know, congratulations. But in, in their mind, they're like, there's no way that, got, that Nate's going to do that because right. they, because of who I've shown up to be. Right. But it, the power is when you can get to the point where you tell somebody to do it and they just know it's going to be done because, because you've been, because you showed up as a person of your word for so long. And so just doing the simple things little, every single day that will stack up over time to where the point you look back and you'd be like, wow, I've actually made a lot of progress here. So hundred miles, it's one step at a time, one mile at a time. Uh, when we were in Alaska, we went from this place called Paxson to Cantwell. Well, we, they had mile markers, which I didn't realize until like mile 27. And then my buddy who was out there pacing me, running with me, he's like, oh, we're, we're just coming up on the 28 mile marker. And I was like, oh, there's mile. I didn't, wasn't paying attention to those. So now what am I doing? Every 29, 30. Now I'm counting. I'm like, man, I got a long ways to go. Right. And we come up to the sign, Cantwell, 110 miles away. I'm like, I got 110 miles to go. I'm like, thanks for the reminder, right? So uh, the, the lesson is just stay focused on today right here, what you can control right in front of you. And then if you keep going and you just put your head down and you focus on the work before you know it, you'll be in Cantwell. You'll, you'll be where you want to go. So, And we have to add to that, be okay sucking and be a person of your word. Right? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't have that overdrawn integrity. I like that. Yeah. You know, and it, it's cool when you have someone in your life that you can go to and and if you ask them for something and they say, oh, sure, no problem. You just know it's going to happen. That yeah. feeling of having that kind of person so in your good. world is phenomenal. So being able to be that kind of person for someone else, that's got a rocket right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, Nate, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us a bit. Uh, I want to be mindful of your time. Uh, if folks want to check out more of Coach Nate Bailey and everything he's got going on, where are we sending them to? Yeah, I'll make it easy. You just go to natebailey.org and that's my website. It's got my podcast blog, you know, copy of my book, uh, find out what I'm up to all there. You can connect with me on social media as well there. All right. And what's the book about? T tell me about that. Yeah. Well, it's called the 100 mile mindset. So yeah. you get the free audio book, um, which really tells my journey and the lessons I learned, uh, through running hundred miles the first time I failed a couple of times, Sure, uh, but I followed through and did what I said I was going to and, and ultimately ran hundred miles. So, yeah. So I have to ask, what, what motivated you to want to run a hundred miles? Well, I just see, I, I know the power in when I have a big goal in front of me, especially mm -hmm. physically, like the commitment that's involved, uh, the time and the energy and the dedication that you have to have, because I don't want to run a hundred miles and end up divorced because of it, because I'm training and I'm not present with my horse. Right? I still have to show up in my business and for my clients. And so by having these big outcomes and these goals in front of me, it forces me to be disciplined and committed in all the other areas as well, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to you know, run a hundred miles to sacrifice everything else. So it just forces me to lift up my performance in all other areas. And so that's what drives me to have something big and a little bit scary in front of me uh, because there's no substitute for the work that's required to be successful in that. And right. so it just forces me to, to lift up my game in all areas of life. And that loops back to what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Dude, that was 100%. Yeah. Nate, I definitely appreciate you coming on, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. All right, there you have it, my Dark Horse friends and family. Nate Bailey dropping 100-mile bombs on us. What thoughts resonated with you today? Let me leave you with a couple that resonated with me. Thought number one, not in alignment right out of the gate. Nate mentioned that if you are not in alignment, it is not going to work. Think about that for a moment. No, no, I mean really think about it. Not that passing, yeah, he's right kind of thought, but a true, holy shit, that's exactly what I'm doing. And he's right. It's not working. Revelation about all the crap that you're doing that's taking time, effort, money, all those valuable resources are taken away from you. And to what end? Well, to a no good end, because if you're not in alignment with what you're doing, 
who you're doing it with or just who you are, then that shit, my friend, is just not going to work out in the long run and you're wasting all those valuable resources, period. Now, what's the first step of fixing this? Well, there's probably hundreds of answers to that question when you focus on the symptoms, all the things that are going wrong. But when you really only focus on the core, which is the disease, you'll need to find and connect with yourself first. So I'm going to dive in a bit deeper on this in episode 264, four ways you can find yourself. Thought number two, they do that for a living? <laughs> Nate shared a story of him being in class, being pulled out to listen to various speakers that came to his school to motivate and educate the student body. Then it hit him. Wow, they can actually do that for a living? Yeah, he was amazed that they could go out there and travel and meet students all the time, meet new students all the time with the goal of uplifting them and educating them on the opportunities that were out there for them. How awesome would it be to do that for a living, right? And what is that for you? That at its core um, is your purpose. And that could be, it could be public speaking, or it could be sales, or marketing, product development, anything out there, right? There's something out there that lends itself to your core, innermost dreams and desires. The key is asking yourself the right questions before you step into and commit yourself to a, a given role or position in an organization. So on Friday, I want to share with you a few things to consider in episode 265, five questions to uncover your purpose. Thought number three, one area of your life impacts the others. Nate said this in passing, so I wanted to be sure that you heard it. Maybe you didn't catch it, and I'm just going to kind of remind you, and you can go back and re-listen to it. He went to work on himself, creating the life that he wanted. He took the time to be successful in business. And, well, let me, let me scratch that. He took the time to learn how to be a good husband and father. He took the time to be successful in business and can take control of his health again. Now, why do you think he, he did all of that? Well, let me give you my personal opinion here. In my personal opinion is when you only focus on one of those things, the others, yeah, they tend to lose out. How many of you have started focusing on your business to the point where your family life starts taking a nosedive or maybe even vice versa, right? Or your health takes the nosedive or your social life or so on and so forth. You see, you have to maintain them all in balance, right? I mean, sometimes you got to work a little harder one than the other, but overall you got to keep them in balance with each area of your life because each area of your life impacts the other. Here's the thing. If you are killing it at work, you're going to have a much easier time to be successful at home. But if your work life is sucking you dry physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I can all but guarantee you that your family life is going to to tank. It, nothing else, it's going to take some stress right in the neck, right? So you have to stay focused on all of them. Yeah, you are going to have to juggle multiple balls in life. And you know what? Just get used to it. That's life. You have never heard me say it was going to be easy. But what I have said is that you are going to feel better for having gotten it done. Thought number four, operate at a higher level. This one almost seems like a natural transition. See, Nate shared about how once he started operating at a higher level, he started meeting and connecting with others who were already operating at that level and perhaps a level or two beyond. For me, this one really resonated. See, I truly believe that Everything around us resonates at some level or frequency or perhaps with some certain resonating energy, right? Whether it be a simple sigh 
You know, the one you just kind of breathe out after you've been grinding away all day at work. Or perhaps the sounds of the frogs at night calling out to one another, echoing in your ear as you lay your head down for the evening. Or the smell of a beautiful flower, right? You know, ah, we smelled a rose, right? Just something. You inhale that aroma and it just, I don't know, it seems to resonate, right? It does something, right? Each and every one of those things puts out an energy into the world, an energy that impacts you a little or a lot, depending on the energy that you have that matches it or doesn't. So Nate started putting out this higher energy by operating at a higher level. This in turn drew him to higher level operators and the energy that he was putting out in turn drew them to him. Now, if he was just posing and putting out a front and operating at that higher level, but the energy wasn't quite there, it would end up putting off those true higher level operators because they would feel it. Because you can always feel the energy of a real higher level person, right? Yeah, we've all been in that room or say that auditorium when that person kind of stepped in and you could feel their energy before they were even introduced, before they stepped on stage, before they come up and shook your hand, before anything, right? You could just feel that energy and you were resonating with it. I would assume you're resonating with it because you chose to be in that room or that auditorium with them. So pick your level and operate at that level and you will draw those that are at that level already to you. And you'll even draw them those that are a little little higher level, right? Because they're still resonating with some of that past energy. And, And once you're there, once you're just really kicking it at that level, kick it up a notch, my friend, right? And resonate your ass to the next level. All right, so what inspiring tips, thoughts, or ideas resonated with you today? Yeah? There's that word again, right? (laughs) Whatever they were, take some time as soon as you can. Right now would be awesome. But, you know, if you're in a position like you're driving or something, I don't want you to be, you know, taking notes while while you're driving. But anyway, as soon as you can, write them down and then put them in action. Get out there, run your race, get your results, and then come let me hear about them. Email me at tracy at darkhorsecooling.com. Share the tips or ideas that you came away with, how you put them into action, and what results you gained from them. Heck, probably bring you on the show and let you share your story with my audience. All right, now next week's interview episode guest is Carmen Ventrucci. Now, Carmen is best known as the girl with the golden shovel. Why? Why the girl with the golden shovel? Because of her really cool ability to help business owners uncover money and opportunity that's already in their businesses while simultaneously providing value to their clients. Ooh, win-win, ka-ching, ka-ching. You're going to want to check this one out. Now, I know you want to keep getting all these valuable tips and awesome stories from the, the guests I'm lucky enough to be bring on this podcast. So please, Go on down there, hit that subscribe button while you're there. Drop us a five-star rating. Leave us some kind words in the reviews. Heck, leave us some critiques, some suggestions, people you'd like us to interview. Ask a question. I read every single one of those reviews. And of course, do not keep all of this entrepreneurial G-O-L-D all to yourself. Share this podcast with other entrepreneurs and business owners that you know will get value from it. And with that, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.